Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com. Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show, sponsored by Arnold Clark. Thursday, the 30th of July, is the date. We're delighted to have you here with us on Facebook and YouTube as well. You can like, share, and follow us on our Facebook channel live Monday to Friday and also on YouTube. You can subscribe, it costs you absolutely nothing. Alan Ruff and Tam McManus are here with me as we get ready, counting down to the start of the season. And of course, Tam, every one of us is going to pick 1 to 12. We are going to get absolute pelt for it, but we're going to stand by our guns, even though there might be, Tam, a few additions here and there that might change or alter our minds as the season progresses. Yeah, I'm kind of wait for the season to start, Peter. I'm sure supporters are the same. Um, listen, it's been a long time. I think I was speaking to someone yesterday, it was 120 days, I think, since the last league game, and it's been terrible. But the football's back this weekend. Obviously, no supporters there, but it'll be interesting to see how they, how they shape up the first couple of weeks. I think it's hard to tell. To pick a prediction just now because you you've not seen the teams for a while and the, and some of the guys you don't know they're signed so um, it could it could be changing maybe week week by week but we'll need to stick by our predictions. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, quite a lot of people are worried that we'd sold Tam uh, yesterday, Ruffy, because obviously he was going through there just to <coughs> try and get get himself acquainted with uh, Hibs Television as well. I mean, uh, there, there was wild speculation that he was gone. No, uh, he's obviously been approached by uh, my old club uh, and uh, I think it's something now with the circumstances everything has been happening that TV is going to be important at games. You know, it might be the only way that uh, supporters are going to get a chance to to see or hear the, the, their club for a wee while. So no, I'm sure he's got a lot of responsibility in his hand now. Yeah, I mean, I'll have, to, I'll have to be his better <laughs> as well. Was it? I'll have to step up to the mark because he, he just never did it as a player. So, I'll probably start off well and then and then fade and get released mid season. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably the way it'll go. I think I think you're being over optimistic on that, Tom. We don't want it was a great ball in. I mean, we want insight into tactics and everything when we're watching you. We want the the hard hitting stuff as well. A couple of Roy Keane's thrown in there. That's what we want, Tom. Yep. Oh, no holes barred, you know, Peter. I've got an opinion. I'll, I'll be sure to give it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and, it might, and co might cost me my job. Yeah, two other two other things that I think you've got to abide by: uh, no flag waivers and no badge kissing. It's as simple as that. Is that fair? Yeah, no, I was never like that. The only, only badge I kissed was uh, was was the money badge. Yeah, okay, <laughs> that doesn't all go well for the future, does it? <laughs> 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 uh, okay, uh, great to have you uh, with us, Tom. Uh, Tony Robertson, John Kelly, Robert Grieve, Ronnie Aitken, uh, James McMullen, Peter Ramsey. Hi, guys. Uh, I'm delighted that you could all join us. Um, Brian Curtis, delighted that you could get there uh, with us as well. James Ferry, Danny Boyd, so many people. Niall Kane, all on here, uh, ready uh, on the uh, Facebook channel uh, and liking and sharing and following us as well. And also on the YouTube, we'll give as many people a mention as we possibly can. There's lots to get through. We'll hear from Kilmarnock boss Alec Dyer uh, on his hopes for the season for Kelly. Um, and also we'll be looking at the Celtic and Rangers squad uh, to get a little insight into uh, the <coughs> strength and depth that they've got ahead of the season because those two clubs undoubtedly will be uh, the favourites for the title. I can tell you that the Scottish Premiership has just voted um, for the uh, five substitute rule, which is an interesting one. I know we've been talking about it uh, in the Betfred Cup and the Challenge Cup as well, but um, they've approved the use of the five substitutes. This means uh, for the opening set of fixtures this weekend, clubs will be able to name a bench of up to nine players but in making their five subs, uh, they can only halt play on three separate occasions during the course of the match. So if you're going to bring on the five, you're going to have to bring on two uh, at one time, two at another, and then one other substitution. So the change recommended to clubs by the SPFL <coughs> board on Friday is a temporary alteration uh, for 2021 season and is designed, of course, to help the clubs with what will be undoubtedly... Um, a uh, kind of a really congested fixture list, uh, Ruffy. Yeah, yeah, I think it's possible. It's probably a a, a question that Tams 
uh, better to answer for me because I've never been on a bench. So, you know, I wouldn't know what it would be like, you know. <laughs> well, he's, in he's in top form of Danny. He's went, to, he's went to Greece and come back with Banner. It's just I've talked about the same. He's, he's absolutely kidding me. Absolutely. I think, no. I think, honestly, Tom, if he could put his fist right through there and belt you, no, well, it's unbelievable. No, it's a bit, it's a Tom will tell you, it's a big thing being on the bench. It means you're part of the bonus. It means you're part Sorry. of the whole setup, and you've got, as long as you go you've got a better chance. Of, yeah, that's right, you've got a better chance. There's lots of stories about people, managers sending guys on with a minute to go just to get the bon oh. just to get the bonus, which is a fair mm. shout. But I, I said yesterday, I think it gives the advantage to the the bigger clubs, the clubs where you you put it. I'm, I'll, I'll I'll pick Rangers. If you get Rangers five on the bench against Hamilton Aki's five, it's on the bench or or anybody else, Ross County. It's going to give them an advantage because they've got better quality sitting waiting to go on than what that the opposition has so that's the only thing i can think would be a disadvantage but if they've all voted for it that's that's fair enough yeah amazingly they've all voted on time without any delays so yeah. apparently there was <laughs> apparently there was nobody roughy with a kind of a deciding oh, yeah. sweat one yeah. way or the other so that's fantastic um listen lots of things happening as we speak i think um vasilis barkas is also speaking to the assembled members of the media uh, i have to say uh, you know sometimes I'm sure they just do it to annoy everybody. Uh, this, th these are the these are some of the the the, the problems that can ar arise from signing players. I know they probably say to me that oh the the deal was only signed and put through in the last couple of hours, but uh, Vasilis Barkas has signed, and they have a press conference at half past three in the afternoon. I mean. Most journalists, everybody's scurrying about, then trying to get <laughs> and out the to it. Yeah, well, not not well. In the in the in the old days, Tom, believe me, I knew a few who would be in the pub at half past three. But but I just I think it's a ridiculous time to try and uh, get everybody scurrying over there and then getting back. I know people think you just point a camera and then that's it, but there's a lot more to it and get, trying to get it ready. And I just think half past three is a ridiculous time. Nonetheless, a wee bit of a moan. He's signed, Tom. He's twenty six years of age. Um, he's signed from AEK Athens on a four year deal. Yep, listen, it's a big outlay for Celtic. You know, they're talking four and a half, five million pounds. Um, listen, there's a sell on value for him. You know, he's only 26 years old, I think. And that's, I thought it was somebody coming up the stairs there. Is that your outfit? I thought you'd have phantom ghost in the house there. <laughs> No, listen, he's, he's 26 years old and I think a lot of Celtic fans would obviously have preferred Fraser Foster for his experience and the fact he's been there and done it at Celtic, he knows how to handle the pressure, but, you know, he's playing at AEK Athens, they're a big club in Greece, you know, they're, they're playing in front of big crowds and they're, they're, they've got to be up there challenging for the title every year, so I think he's got the experience of, of handling that pressure and he's a big lad, six foot five. And uh, listen, it's, it's a badly needed position that Celtic had to fill, you know, they're probably needing another one as well. Yeah, I was going to ask you this, uh, Ruffy. Um, Mikey Johnson. Um, <laughs> Mikey Johnson. I'm not going for it, Ruffy. Uh, Mikey no, Johnson no. Uh, picked up an injury. I mean, he's he, he's one of those lads. He's, he's been yeah. curtailed in his development uh, with uh, niggling injuries. But I, I thought he was on the verge of actually being one of those guys that he was really forcing Neil Lennon's thought process on a starting eleven. Yeah, I, I thought that was one of the reasons that Sin Sinclair moved on because I thought any chance time he was given a chance, he looked really impressive. He's a different kind of player from most of the players I've got. He's a wee nippy guy who can get in and out people, great fast feet, you know, and get into the box. He can score goals, you know, and it's a shame because he's, he's picked up two or three injuries now just as he's been forcing himself into that squad. So it's a sh I hope it's not a really sore one. It's just a calf injury, I think. So. Let's hope we can go over that as quick as possible. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Colin Robertson on our Facebook, uh, and we'll duck and dive to comments that are coming in. Colin Robertson says, Danny Swanson to East Fife is a good signing. I thought that was a good signing because, I don't know about you, Tam, am I, uh, I'm, probably he's coming to the tail end of his career, Danny, but I still thought he could have done a job at a higher level than East Fife. My apologies to any East Fife fans who are offended. No, great signing for East Fife. Darren Young's a good pal of mine, uh, manager of East Fife, and East Fife is a club I played with in loan when I was a kid, so 
good wee club. And listen, great mm -hmm. signing for them. Danny Swanson's an excellent player. Um, he, he's had a great career. He's played with some big clubs in Scotland. And uh, no, listen, it's. I think it's maybe the sign of the times, Peter. When you get guys like that who haven't they dropped down into League One and League Two to get <laughs> a job, um, you'll see it probably in the Lowland League as well. You know, players are just trying to take anything they can uh, to to stay in the game and get a wage. So um, that's probably East Fife's benefit in this case. Yeah, uh, you're absolutely right. I mean, that's the other thing I was going to say, Ruffy. Um, I think Tam makes a really good point there because of the <coughs> amount of players yeah. who are available uh, and they're suddenly thinking to themselves, God, I, I might actually have to drop into to part-time or somebody says, I, I might have to accept a club that I wouldn't even have considered. Yeah, we've been talking about that since uh, the end, of the, since the beginning of the season, when the players, the, the clubs have been releasing all these players, and and the individual player would have to say to himself, right, I'm not going to get in this division. There's nobody approached me for this division, you know. And then when somebody does approach you, you're then going to decide, you know, is that where I want to be? Or, 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 you're just in the end of nothing. You're just doing, doing nothing at all. So. Players like him, you know, that's an absolute uh, above, again, no disrespect to East Fife, but that's above the standard that East, East, East Fife have been having over the last three or three years. So it just shows you there'll be lots of other clubs. So it might be beneficial for the lower leagues, you know, to capture players like that and it make it more competitive. Uh, yeah, because um, certainly if, they, if that's the kind of player that they're going to sign, then it's going to be good, good for everybody. Stephen Hill says El Yanusi is the player of the season in Scotland um, uh, and he just thinks here and now he's going to be the top man uh, Jim Haddo says Peter give a shout out to my dad he's at the pa in Palm Coast um, so I've mentioned it Jim uh, Jim's dad if you're there thank you very much uh, for joining us uh, we've got fans near and far it's Scotland's number one football show it's bigger and better each season the amount of people that are coming on and following the show now is absolutely incredible. Why would you want to go anywhere else? That's all I'm saying to you uh, at the moment. Join the football family and stick with the team uh, that's here and we've got a good few things coming up that I think will catch everybody by surprise and uh, if you think I'm excited, have a look at Tam's face at the moment as he tries to suppress his laughter. Anyway, <laughs> apart from <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, we've came, we've came, we came in yesterday as well. It's coming. Uh, we're saving the best for tomorrow, Tom. Um, right. listen, there's a few, a few other things that I want to get off my chest. Um, one of the things, the reasons why I'm, I named Motherwell, <laughs> and I only named one, Tom. I know we're going to do 1-12 to 12 on Friday, um, but I named Motherwell as the team I think will finish third. Um, and the reason for that is, um, you know, the early indications, things can change when teams make huge signings or, or, or get off to a bad start. But... Sam Cosgrove could be out for four months, you know. I, I actually, I laughed today because this is the nature of the tribalistic <coughs> attitude of Scottish football. You know, we put that out in our bulletin, he could be out for four months. It's it's an injury he's picked up. And, and somebody from Aberdeen said, same old West Coast media, uh, you know, <laughs> as, if it, as, as if we were actually trying to come up with something that was, you know, overly uh, bad news, even more bad news than the possible fact that he's out with a cruciate ligament injury. I mean, it does look as if with a cruciate, Tam, you kick a ball quicker than four months, unless you're going to tell me differently. No, no, listen, Peter, he's going about for a, a, a long time and it's just a pity, it's sod's law that, you know, listen, he's, he's, we've not had any football for three or four months and then he, he just comes back and he's injured again, so mentally it's going to be very tough for the big guy um, and it's a huge blow for Aberdeen, you know, he's, he's, he scores 20 goals every season for them, obviously Aberdeen knocked back a big bid as well um, last month and, and it just shows you that that is football in a nutshell and you know, when, players, when people criticise players for, for, for making moves to earn themselves more money, Things like this can happen, Peter. You know, you can get a bad injury and it could... Listen, I'm not saying his career's ended or anything. He'll, he'll come back, he's still young enough, but it's a type of injury that, that, can, that can can make your career start a little bit and you could miss out on that big move. So um, that's one of the reasons why I think always as a player, um, you've got to look after yourself. Obviously, the bid wasn't accepted by Aberdeen, so he didn't have a decision, but um, going forward, I think that it's... Uh, it's a big blow for him mentally, especially when he maybe thought he was on the verge of a, of a big move. So um, I hope he comes back fit and well.
Yeah, 23 goals last season. Of course, 44, I think, in something like 87 games, roughly. Yeah. That's, a goal, that's a goal every two yeah. games. I watched him in the early part of his career, and he looked as if he was a big cart horse. But then, all of a sudden, he just really got to know what Scottish football was about and started battering goals in for fun. Yeah, and he's the same as any big uh, centre-forward. He needs supply. He, he needs players around about him to give him the, the ball he walks into the box. And that's what was happening. There was players there were getting to the certain positions and making it easy for him. But yeah, you're right. Goals, year on year, were getting better and better. I think possibly the reason that Aberdeen knocked that bid back because other people were wanting to have a look at him you know, and, and maybe offer more. So but I'm like Tom. It's all about the player now. It's all about him getting his head around this cruciate. It's not about the four months that you're saying he's going to be out. It's the recovery, you know, and, and coming back for a cruciate is a big, big injury to come back from. It's one of the worst ones. People will tell you you're better with a leg break, you know, that, and coming back for that. So let's hope it is uh, he can come back as quick as possible. Yeah, man, thanks for that, Ruffy. You're a right battle of laughs there. You're, you're, better, you're, better, with, you're better with a leg break <laughs> Okay. <laughs> when, when, oh, oh, Peter, when, when, when do we get when do we get Doctor Richard Stedman on the show? We call it Adam. <laughs> Honestly, I know uh, Ruffy. They are offering medical assessments on yes. this as well now. Um, he's, he's got it all this season. I think you're on fire, Ruffy. I mean, honestly, put the last eight years behind you. This is going to be your year on the show. You've been absolutely yes. magnificent so far. Um, now, uh, the other thing I was going to say to you. Uh, not only Cosgrove's a blow, um, Tam, but uh, Curtis Maines picked up a thigh injury. There was a wee, I don't know where the suggestion came from. It certainly is not something I would have um, certainly entertained that, you know, maybe Aberdeen might look and say Stephen Fletcher, but Der Derek McKenna says, look, Stephen Fletcher's well outside our wage bracket. We just couldn't afford him. But Curtis Maines a blow, which is why I wouldn't even... <coughs> I wouldn't even start to put any money on Aberdeen taking anything from the game at half twelve on Saturday. No, listen, that, that's probably their, their backup striker as well. Um, they've got young Bruce Anderson up there who, um, who burst onto the scene. I think uh, Stephen Gerrard's first first game up at Aberdeen has scored a late one, uh, late equaliser um, against Aberdeen, but he's not really kicked on since then, Bruce. So he'd be looking maybe to get <laughs> an opportunity for Aberdeen um, with, with a lack of strikers there and. No, listen, it's two big players for them, and Rangers got up there strong. Um, you know, you'd, you would fancy Rangers to go up and win the game, but Stephen Fletcher's an interesting one because, for me, I would, if I was Neil Lennon, I would have a minute Celtic part tomorrow. I think he's different class, Stephen Fletcher, and if Aberdeen could even get anything towards a, a, some sort of package uh, to get Stephen, then I don't think money's an issue for him. Maybe it is to drop that much money to, to go to Aberdeen or likes of Hibs or something, but... Um, Great player, great striker, and uh, there'll be a few clubs definitely would take him in Scotland. Yeah, I mean, are all players driven by money, Ruffy? Mm -hmm. no, I was just wondering if that's what uh, Stephen had told him when he was running at Tams for his dinner the other night. Uh, <laughs> you know, what he was looking for. <laughs> oh, Tams, Tams, he's aging. He's been, he's been in the press giving it I'm trying to get my move for him. I'm desperate to get my move. I know. Do you know what it is, by the way? I, I tell you what it is, Ruffy. It's so Tam can have a shot in Fletch's Lamborghini around oh, the yes. East Kilbride, you know, because it's, mm -hmm. th th it's difficult to actually... Take me for a couple of games of golf. Once you go around all those roundabouts in East Kilbride, that'll be magnificent in the Lamborghini. Uh, I think he's going to be... Is he not, is he not going to be at five or six of them, Tam? Yeah, I don't think he's struggling for, for money, Peter. Um, but as I said, no, I just down, he, he loves sports cars, doesn't he? Yeah, he loves he loves cars. Yeah, he, he does. He, he loves cars. He was a young player at Hibs coming through when, when I was there, and, and uh, he was a fantastic young player. And he's only thirty three. He still got get plenty in the tank, and uh, there'll certainly be clubs in Scotland who would take him in a minute. Uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. What would he be happy with? Get a wage? Would he be happy for? I'm not sure. Get away. <laughs> well, he was on. He was on. He was on thirty-six grand a week. Sheffield Wednesday. Yes. All right. right. Maybe if you does take he, the thirty does, away. Does he like? Yeah. Does he like yellow and red and stripes? Like that's what Ruffy's going for. Yeah. Here. Would yeah. you take that drop off? into the? Can you imagine yeah. Fletch running out for a big game against Clyde? And Ruffy dipping into yeah. his pension. Oh, yeah. <laughs> absolutely, you never know um, Listen, there's uh, lots of people giving us comments On um, players that are injured The Aberdeen situation Celtic, we're going to talk about Rangers as well shortly uh, We'll hear from Alec Dyer at Kilmarnock uh, Just one uh, thing that was uh, Mentioned by Nicola Sturgeon The First Minister, which is 
good news for Scottish football, hopefully, as we come out of what we hope is the um, end of coronavirus. But I have my doubts. You know, what the big fear for everyone is a, a second wave. But she said there would be a potential for uh, a limited amount of fans allowed into uh, you know stadiums across the country from September. Now, Celtic have put out a statement saying uh, the club uh, welcomes today's announcement by the Scottish Government that supporters are set to be allowed back into football stadia from September 14th. The guidance published today indicates that sports stadia can reopen from September 14th with a limited number of fans allowed in and following public health measures. There's also the possibility of test events before then as well. Celtic delighted with this positive development and appreciative that the government has taken this important step. We'd like to thank the government, the SFA, the SPFL Joint Response Group and everyone at the club who collaborated and worked so hard over these past few difficult months. It is our intention to get as many supporters as we can back into Celtic Park as soon as we can within the guidance. However, the safety and security of our supporters is always our top priority and we will communicate more on this as soon as possible. Now, that is a statement which basically I think every club will echo those sentiments. I'm sure Rangers will release a statement regarding this. Um, everybody in the Premiership almost certainly, Tam, because fans still play a huge part in the financial wheels that keep the clubs going, more so than anything that is an offer in the English Premier League. Yeah, listen, we, we, we rely on our fans in Scotland. You know, I, I, I read a great statistic um, that we were... Per, per capita, but per head, we were the, the best supported country in, in terms of football in, in the world. So, listen, we we need guys coming through, people coming through the gates. And and listen, if we if we don't get that, um, clubs are really going to struggle. I was through Easter Road yesterday, and you look at a stadium like that. Um, I think it's eighteen thousand all seater. You know, you look at the big spaces, you could possibly get a couple of thousand in there um, and social distance them. So, I think a lot of cl clubs will be looking at it with the bigger stadiums to try and maybe get even two or 3,000 in there, and that, that would make a big difference in terms of, of finances to the clubs. Kevin Judge, who's on YouTube uh, on our channel, says, I would be interested how they choose who gets in with limited attendance. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's... Uh, and Ray has said 43% of Scottish football's revenue is ticket sales. Uh, I wonder yeah. who gets in, Rafi. Who, get, who, gets the, who gets the Willy Wonka mm -hmm. golden ticket? Well, surely the season ticket people will get a first shout. Uh, they're the ones who have bought their, their yearly uh, ticket, so I think they'd be first. But I think I think there would be enough. So I say this: and there, there are enough stadiums that can self isolate. There's enough because a lot of the stadiums are not full at any particular time. It would just be how they would do it, and I would like to think most clubs are actively looking into that just now about how they get them through the, the turnstile, how they get them to their seat. Obviously, everybody will be wearing masks, you know, at a distance. And I, I think it can be done, but I think it has to be done under, obviously, the guidance of the health people. And once it gets a go-ahead, I think there will be early introductions of how you do it. I was watching the telly there. They're going to allow people into the racing on Saturday. They've got it all cordoned out, where they're going to seat, where, how they're going to get coming in. It can be done. It, it just needs a trial bit first for people to show everybody mm. that it can be done, you know. And once it can be done, then I think everybody else can sort of latch on to it. Yeah, Billy McGrath says, uh, I'm sure there's going to be 5,000 allowed into the horse racing uh, this coming weekend, which uh, just echoes what you're saying. All tickets already gone and no fans been asked not to turn... Uh, fans have been uh, asked not to turn up at the turnstiles. I just wonder if, uh, you know... You said, yeah, season tickets will get the call, Ruffy, but, you know, if, if you get 5,000, uh, Tam, and you've sold 50,000, who who does get the call? Right. Who's the special fan that's lucky to get the call? If there's 5,000, Tam, that's the thing. It'll be it'll probably be a ballot. You think the, the, the fairest way to do that is a, is a draw, but you, could, you, can't, you can't go and say somebody deserves to, to go to a game before someone else if you've both got season tickets. So I think the fairest way would be pull out a hat. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just an update, incidentally, uh, talking about why we're all uh, discussing this, uh, how many fans are getting in. Of course, uh, the SFA and the SPFL, uh, you know, 
rigidly looking and, and testing and making sure that uh, this uh, you know coronavirus doesn't get out of hand. Um, they're testing the players, and from the twentieth to the twenty sixth of July, uh, only one positive test out of seven hundred and fifteen, Ruffy, which is um, you know good good news. Good news that per- that person, that player, will be isolated, or that staff member will be isolated, um, and now for ten days. That's another update, Ruffy. If you yeah. are in any way positive, you're out of action for 10 days yeah that that was a major worry for everybody if we did go back and we played two or three games and then all of a sudden it kicked in again and we'd be back to square one so no i think the i think the clubs know exactly what they've got to do they've got to get the testing right that that stat there proves that they are doing it right uh, and let's hope it continues to that way because we, we just don't want to go back to square one again uh, we want to kick on here the most of the the COVID stuff's been been positive. Okay, there's been wee bubbles here and there, but certainly in the footballing sense, I think everybody's just waiting to see that uh, we can kick ahead and, and hopefully nobody else picks it up. Yeah, John Barkey's got an interesting point here, Ruffy. He says, um, Peter, I'm from East Kilbride. Uh, I would be driving about in a Lamborghini, especially in Green Hills. Tell Tam my local pub is the Hudson if he's up for a beer any time. So, um, you know, lots of people would love to drive over East Kilbride in a Lamborghini. <laughs> 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 yeah, like they are. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure the Keens could the, Keen, the Keens could afford it. The, the, the boys at Onyx yeah. Bride, they've got a few quid. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the Greenhouse, the Greenhouse pub, I don't think yeah. I'd be wanting to get in there. Maybe get any Hudson's for a pint. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I think yeah, if listen. I was driving, I think if I'd be driving the Lamborghini, I'd just keep driving. I wouldn't park anywhere. I'd just keep driving to the petrol run. At- <laughs> <laughs> there's lots of good there's lots of good mates of mine in East Kilbride I love it it's snobby there because he lives in a big giant hill I know. in the middle of nowhere um, anyway I'll tell you one thing Ruffy you wouldn't be able to get the Lamborghini up that road to your house it's a disaster Oof. no certainly you, you wouldn't get by all the potholes you wouldn't be by a yeah. Lamborghini would it took me about three hours to get it out I went there last time <laughs> yeah what, what the Lambo that's a um, okay. that's a <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, let's uh, yeah. let's move on to uh, Stephen Gerrard. Um, I noticed Chris Sutton said that um, you know he, he hasn't done anything in the two years. Uh, I thought he was a wee bit hypercritical on Stephen Gerrard. I think a lot of Rangers fans um, will look at the improvement in Europe. Uh, certainly, it's a better team. He's signed a lot. He's signed a lot of players, Tam. My personal opinion on Steven Gerrard, I like the way he's conducted himself over the two years. I'm not interested in I'm not interested in the the player or the, the legend that is Steven Gerrard. That for me was brilliant as a you know, as a guy who loved Liverpool as my English team, I thought he was absolutely sensational. But you have to look at him as a manager. I personally think he has to win the league or the games of bogey. Yeah. Peter, he's, he's, listen, he's got to stop 10 in a row. Listen, the Rangers fans are demanding it. Um, there's been a lot of money spent. I think he's done a reasonable job. I think he's, his performances, in, in, particularly in Europe, have, have certainly added to his reputation. I think they've had a brilliant run. And you look at where they were before he came in. You know, they get beat off a, a pro- progress. Niedercorn, they're a part-time team from Luxembourg. So, listen, the, the, the progress I've made, particularly in Europe, has been, has been staggering, to be honest. But... The league campaign, they still not won anything, and, and managers are judged, particularly Celtic Rangers. You've got to win. You've got to win something. And for me, if if they don't win the league this year, then either he'll be sacked or or, or, he'll, or he'll walk away because you know the be all and end all is is to stop Celtic getting ten in a row. And even we spoke about it a couple of weeks ago. If Rangers go have a poor start and maybe drift six or seven points behind Celtic early doors, then I think there'll be a decision to made be made by Rangers as well. So. Um, no, he's got, he's got, to, he's got to win a league. He's got to stop Celtic winning ten in a row. Simple as that. Yeah, I don't think League Cup and Scottish Cup cuts it, Ruffy. No, the league's a big one, particularly because it's ten in a row. You know that that's the one that it's going to be labelled down through the years that he was the manager of Rangers who did or didn't uh, uh, do it in the league. So that's what he's going to be judged on. But and I would love to know. I mean, you you might be able. To, I'd love to know his first eleven when he actually came to Rangers compared to what his eleven is now. 
I'd like to see the change in quality and see what he's done because that's what he has done. He's brought quality to the side. It still obviously isn't enough to win the league, uh, and the Rangers supporters will be wanting desperately to win something. But I think if you were to ask the Rangers supporters this year, what would you like to win? Would it be the cup or the Betfred or the league? It would be the league, one hundred percent. Yeah, I still think he needs three or four players over and above whether Morella stays or not. I think he's, I think he's three or four players short of really putting uh, the Frighteners on Celtic's march towards 10 in a row. Uh, that's my personal opinion on it. I'm looking at the squads, I'm looking at their quality, I'm looking at the squad in depth. Here's what the Rangers side looks like as far as the squad and the depth that they have, Ruffy, uh, in the particular positions. I mean, I think I think McLaughlin is a great signing for Rangers um, as a backup to McGregor, that's uh, for certain. Um, Bassey's come in, we haven't had a, a real uh, look at him properly in a competitive game. I think Barisic has been superb with his crossing from the left-hand side. He looks as if he's in the mood. Um, but other than that, you know, good cover in the middle of the park, um, but I still think they're, I still think they're short term. What do you make of where you would strengthen that side? Um, I think I would look at the right back situation. I know the young boy Patterson is is a young promising player, but I think you need a bit of experience for Tavernier. Um, the the, the centre half, I think you need another centre midfield player, and. I think up front, I think, you know, Morelos thing, we don't know if he's going to go or not, if he's going to stay. I, th I personally think he will go. Um, if it's not to Lille, it'll be someone else. I think Rangers will, will cash in and they'll, they'll have, you know, irons in the fire to replace him. But if he does go, I think Rangers need to. I don't think you can rely on Defoe. I know he's a good professional and he's, and he, but he's, 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 he seems to be picking up a, quite a bit of hamstring injuries. And I think as you get older, you're harder to come back from. Um, you know, he's had a great career. I'm not saying he's finished, but I think you, you, you can't, you can't rely on him to play. He play 30, 35 games. Peter, you've got to have someone in there who is your number nine who's going to play the majority of the games and, and have Defoe as a backup uh, coming on the last 20 minutes if you're struggling. You can't go with him as your main striker. So I think Rangers, particularly in that forward area, if they lose Morelos, they've got to go and sign two strikers. Yeah, Brian says, where do you think? Yeah. Um, in what areas, Peter? Ruffy, I say centre-half. Uh, I think he needs a... He needs a a real bit of class in the middle of the park, and I think two strikers, as Tam says. Yeah, well, he's got enough. He's got enough centre halves there. They just need to turn up. They need to show them they're better than what they were last year and stop cutting out the mistakes. If he gets the right two together, an extended run that might help. For me, I just think they're they're lacking a Scott Brown. I, I don't think they've got any steel in the middle of the park at all. Hadji looks a tidy wee player. Arivo looks a right tidy player as well. But I don't think there is any steel. There's no leader sitting in the middle of that park dictating things and showing there's a bit of dig in there. Uh, and I think that's what they're sadly missing. You know, they haven't had it for a wee while. Uh, and until they get somebody like that, I, th I think they might struggle. Because we I mean, certainly have Scott Brown in there and they've got the youth run about the McGregor and the Christie, all the, the legs run about him, you know, and he just he's he's now fell fall into the Neil Lennon mode, you know, he just dictate the game, get the ball, make the passes. I don't think Rangers have got that kind of player. Yeah, interestingly enough, uh, Tom Smith says, Can can Tam not speak properly? It's Lille and none of this Tav stuff. <laughs> See, <I listen. laughs> you, you know, uh, that's the type of thing. This is what's going to happen, Tam. I just want to tell you that the reason why I mentioned that is because wait till we get to December. <laughs> because for me, <laughs> the, Christmas, the Christmas spirit will end if, uh, if this um, battle for the title and the, the quest to stop 10 or win 10, it will become poisonous. I think we are in for... Mm. Um, one of the roughest rides in a long time on this channel, right across the media, right across written press and the broadcast as well. Um, there are fans and there are times when I think we will be shaking our heads. Um, so I'm just preparing you for it, Tam. It's going to become poisonous. Um, you will see the full vitriol uh, if it's not going according to plan for certain clubs. I'm almost certain of that. Um, 
other things that are that are in the news. Alec Dyer, um, the Kilmarnock boss, has been speaking today. Of course, uh, Killy ready for action at Easter Road against Hibs at the weekend. Tam, you'll be covering that game for Hibs TV. Looking forward to it. Really to see it. Um, so you'll be there. You, you'll be there uh, with the ta- You'll be there with the Tanner man uh, giving it big licks. Uh, and of course, um, Kilmarnock's manager Alec Dyer. First and foremost, I think uh, someone asked him what was the priority. Uh, is it to try and get in the top six and he had some plain talking for the Kelly fans there's a bit of going is a bit safe but it's the honest truth the truth is we don't know what's out there in the sense of how, how the other teams are and how um, they've done their work and without those supporters so the first thing is to to make sure we stay in the league you know we've seen what happened to Hearts and um, no one wants to be in that predicament <coughs> I think I, I think that's the nature. I'm not going to get involved, Ruffy, in a, uh, the whole league um, expansion, reconstruction, all of that stuff because I don't put you on a downer. But Alec Dyer, there's fairly realistic foundation survival. Then anything above that's a bonus. I, I can see where he's coming from, but I don't think the Kamala supporters will be wanting to hear that they're, they're in the league for survival. They'll be wanting top six or more. And I think that the players that are at Kilmarnock will be thinking that as well. So, yeah, he might be just saying that just to you know smooth things over a wee bit. But I would like to think Kilmarnock have more ambitions than just staying in that league. Uh, so I think that's just a wee throwaway for the, the press more than anything else. Yeah, um, the, the other topic which I thought was very pertinent to uh, Alec Dyer because over the weekend lots of people will be showing their solidarity, their support for this say uh, no to racism uh, and they'll be taking a knee, uh, show racism, the red card is certainly going to be heavily involved this weekend uh, and this is what the Killy boss had to say on the matter. I don't know, over the moon I'm chuffed with it, you know. Um... The most important thing is people recognise that there is something wrong in society and it has to be it has to be dealt with. It's it's a good time. You know, I'm glad they're doing it down south and I don't see why not we shouldn't do it up here. It's it's so important to get the message out. Yeah, get the message out is one thing for me, Tam. Positive action that gives people the opportunity, if they were rightly denied it, um, I'd like to see, you know, uh, the efforts made actions rather than gestures and, and some forms of tokenism. I'm not dismissing what's happening this weekend. Uh, I'm just saying if by uh, highlighting it, we get some positive response out of it and people can see a change, then it's worth it. Yeah, absolutely. As you said, it's, it's actions rather than words. You know, we, we spoke about this for, for, for a long time, you know, show racism, the red card in Scotland. Is, is so underfunded, you know, going back to them, going to give them a few quid to get out in the schools and, and get it out to the kids as well and and really and really push it. You know, it's, it's okay just doing these, you know, on your own Saturday doing the Black Lives Matter, taking the knee and stuff, but you've got to you've got to you've got to produce some sort of, you know, effort and, and putting it into schools and uh, educating people because it, it's not right it's not right what's happened. Um, I think it's now in the public eye all over the world. And as Alex said there, it's a perfect time for us to go and push on and, and really try and eradicate um, a lot of racism we've got in, in, in all over the world. So um, rather than just taking the knee, let's get let's get the, as you said, show racism, the red card, get them funded, get them into schools. They do some brilliant work, um, but they don't get enough money um, to, go and, to go and really, really push it. So go and maybe employ a couple of people full time yeah. and, uh, and get them into the schools and get them into clubs. Yeah, and I think, may I add, I think it's, it, it's I, not just kids, Ruffy. It's not just kids. No, no. Yeah. I think, a lot of older think, people need think, to educate yeah. it. Yeah. Well, that's what I was just going to say. I think it would be a bigger message if fans were in the stadium when the players are doing it. You know, if there was a, a fair quota of your own supporters in the stadium watching your players going on the knee, it might get through a wee bit more because it's more visual that they're there in the stadium and they've got to say, look, my players are doing it, so... I think I should be doing it as well, you know. And it's unfortunate yeah. there's no supporters in this stadium, but uh, let's hope it gets through to the people that we want to really take uh, stand up and take notice of it. Well, as I mentioned to everyone, because obviously I'm an ambassador for show races and the red card. As I mentioned to everyone, it shouldn't just be about two weeks of the year. 
when people hold up a card and show their backing. This has to be a sustained effort, a sustained change in people's mindset. Um, Gary Doonan makes a good point, and I apologise for this, Gary, because would you believe I did have actually uh, the Celtic um, backup squad ready, and I just it completely slipped my head when I was talking about Rangers and the squad they have and the, and the quality of player they have and what we think they'll need. Uh, so, Gary, my apologies for that. And um, what about the, the the second string, the quality in depth in the Celtic squad here? Here it is now, just to prove the point, Gary. This is what Celtic have uh, to show there. They've got uh, Barkas in now, uh, Bain, Hazard. Um, Tam, where would you strengthen that team? Um, I mean, you look at that compared to the Rangers squad. They've got two, basically two experienced players, first team players in every position. You know, Bar probably centre half. Uh, you know, Welsh there as a backup and maybe attacking midfield on the right hand side. Um, Schwed. But apart from that, you've got cop- serious competition in the middle of the park. I mean, you look at that: McGregor and Cham, Christie, Rogic, Brown. You know, uh, that's that is, is real intense competition in there um, for places. Elanusi and as a striker role, you know, they've got, you've got. You know, obviously, Jet he's no sign yet. Griffiths looked very sharp against Hibs. Uh, Klamala, for me, I, I'm no, I'm not sure about <coughs> Klamala. To be honest with you, I, I don't think he's, I don't think he's good enough for Celtic. I don't think Bio is either. Um, so, I'd be looking to definitely strengthen, strengthen the forward area. I'd, I'd possibly put Bio and Klamala out on loan if possible, and try and get more quality. Try and get more the finished article. I mean, I know there are two of them are young, younger players, um, and they maybe go on and be, and be good players. But I just think now. Right now, for Celtic, they need, you know, quality and guys they can trust. If maybe Edward gets injured, or even if he gets sold, and I don't think that will happen, but you never know. Yeah. I think they need real, real quality uh, backup. To and Griffiths but, is is that backup, but I think outside of that, they're they're they're, they're, they're pretty weak. Yeah, I have to say, uh, Tam, I, I disagree with you there. Um, I'm, I know that uh, Gabriel, when he was putting that graph together, a Yeti was close to signing yesterday, and then all of a sudden he's away to have a wee think about it. Um, so he's a, a guy that, you know, obviously is itching to play from West Ham, but Klamala, I'm not so sure loan deals on him. I think this is this is the season, Tam, where he's put in a lot of pre-season work. He, he knows, he was signed with a, a pedigree with where you know they were looking for him to make the next step, so I don't think he's going anywhere fast on loan. I think um, you know he's got himself to the point where he's saying, "Right, let me loose, and I'll show you what I can do." Uh, uh, listen, I think you're right. I think he would suit a scouting attacking team. Listen, teams come to Celtic Park, and even at home, they, they, they park the bus. You know, they, they defend the numbers deep. I, I don't see him as that kind of striker who's intelligent enough to maybe move into spaces and get space in the box. I think he's a guy who needs space to run into. I think he's got great pace, you know, a ball over the top. And But that, that ha- very rarely happens at Celtic. So I, I'm not arguing that he's not a decent player and he's got good potential. But I just think, as he's, as he's suited to Celtic at the minute and what they need, I think they need a, a, a more clever player, a more penalty box striker. That's just my opinion. Yeah, a kind of Stephen Fletcher type of player. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, he's rel- no, 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 no. <laughs> he's relentless, Ruffy, isn't he? He's yeah, just no. so brazen. No Honestly, there's a, there's a cut. There's a Ruffy. There's a cut. No, in no, 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 you, no. You know? <laughs> yeah, honestly, no, you, you, no, no, no. You never do anything without having a bit of reasoning behind it. You've got your, you've got your be inspired shirt there, so you can get <laughs> so close to Kevin Corcoran for their. Christmas night out. Yeah. Come on, you. There's yeah. always an angle with you. Come on. No, there's no I'm angle gonna, here. I'm, no I'm, angle. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tune into Hibs TV at the weekend and see if he gets a mention there as well. Oh, he's, honestly, uh, oh, I you. think he's a Hibs player. If, 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 if a Hibs striker, if a Hibs striker goes down injured, I'll, I'll, I'll say Stephen is, is available. Um, but I am tell, I am telling, I am telling you right now, Ruffy. On Sunday when he's on Al Jazeera television, he'll say <laughs> Stephen Fletcher can can handle the humidity over here. It'll be brilliant. It'll be great for him. Um, anyway, apart from anything else, um, that's hopefully for Gary and a few others who were mentioning there. There's uh, Celtic. Maybe jump the gun a wee bit. My apologies with the uh, Yeti. Whether he um, decides to join Celtic or not, I don't know. Um, but 
certainly when we're looking there, uh, all um, eyes will still be on the Morelos situation. Um, you know, listen, that that, f- that figure, Ruffy, is doing my head in. We've been talking about this boy for, what, 12, 18 months potentially leaving. You've had every club possibly in the world linked with him. And the figure's gone from 5 to 10 to 15 to 18. It's just madness. Yeah, I, I think in, in, in this one, it's because that they... They have got a striker they're going to sell for 60 million. So everybody's saying, well, if they can sell him for 60 million, we can get 18 for ours. And it doesn't work that way. They've obviously put in a bid in. The Rangers have just said, look, this is nowhere near what we're wanting. They probably put a bid in there about 10. I, 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 I definitely think Rangers would accept maybe 14 or something like that with some add ons here and there. Uh, and it remains to be seen whether they go for it. They they might just think, no, that's what yeah. he is. That's the figure. That's the figure. We don't think he's going to be any better than that. And they might walk away. So it really depends whether the Rangers manager really wants some more quality coming in. And, and the only way they're going to get that quality is to pay quality money. So the only way they're going to have it is if they sell him. And then we'll see what kind of player that the, the Rangers want to try and bring in. Yeah, but the problem here, uh, Tam and Ruffy, on this, um, Tam, this is a fine balancing act. I mean, Hugh has uh, posted a message there on Facebook saying to us, remember, Peter, Rangers are still in the Europa League. It's a tough tie, I admit. Um, They're in the Europa League. They're 3-1 down. Um, I don't think too many Rangers fans think that they're going to be able to go there and and absolutely turn over by a Leverkusen. But, Tam, the big problem I have with the role is if he does eventually go... There's that fine balancing act where you're trying to get players in to to hit the ground running. This is not this is not a season to come in and somebody gives you a couple of months to bed yourself in. This is getting no. in, get the jersey on and keep buying goals in. Yep, no no settling settling in period. You, you get very little of that with old firm anyway, Peter. But particularly this season, you know, if, if, if a new signing comes in in the first twenty minutes, he's not, he's not looking the best. You, you you get fans moaning already. You know why did we sell Morelos? So. Um, I think it's very important that Rangers have got. I think that listen, they're not, Ross Wilson's not daft. I know Ross. They, they will have they will have players in the background ready to come in. But as you said, can they come up here and handle the pressure of playing for Rangers? You know, Barry spoke about it plenty of times. You know, it's a different kettle of fish up here when the fans are on your back. You know, and you're one 0 down. It's it's okay when you're winning four and five nothing. But you know, strikers have got to score. You've got to score every week with Rangers and Celtic. You've got to. There's, there's no there's no in between. You can't go three and four games without a goal. You've got to be scoring goals every week and winning every week. So that's a pressure that Morelos has handled, to be fair to him. You know, obviously off the part and and maybe his, his discipline's let him down, but more often than not, um, maybe not against Celtic, but against the rest of the clubs, he's came up trumps, he's he's handled it and he's been their match winner on many occasions. So I think he'd be big boots to fill, Peter uh, Morelos. You know, I, I think Rangers this season should be looking to hang on to him, but we don't know if Stephen Gerrard's looked him in the eye and said, listen, do you want to stay? And he said no, or he said yes. We, we, we're not privy to that conversation. So if he wants to go and, uh, and, he, and he's really keen on leaving, then Rangers have got to get the best price they possibly can for him. Yeah, yeah. it really I, is. I, I know it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's, it's really another position where Stephen Fletcher could move into. Well, Ruffy, honestly, you just took the words out of my mouth because I was, I was thinking to myself, why, why is he, why is he talking about Celtic? But I think, I think he's. Uh, I'm not so sure. I think Rangers fans would want a, a younger player as well. But he, for mm. me, if he was available without any, without any transfer, if I was Stephen Gerrard, yeah. I would putting the call into him. Would you not, Tom? Yep. Oh, abs- yep. Absolutely. Um, I think it would be a great signing for either the old firm. Uh, in terms of any other clubs in Scotland, they would walk into any other teams. But I think Celtic Rangers are both, I think, looking for a striker. I think Rangers in particular. But the thing with Rangers is if they sell Morelos, they'll be looking for a big name. They'll be looking for a big pedigree player to come in. And rightly so, I don't think Stephen Fletcher would cut it with the Rangers fans. Uh, not because of he's, how good a player he is. I just mm-hmm. think they're looking for, they'd be looking for a, for a bigger name. You know, a guy who can really step in and, and guarantee you 30 goals. Yeah, um, Hugh Hepburn Duff, who's a regular sometimes. I think he, he suffers the um, wrath of quite a few people because he might overstep the, the line from time to time, but he still survived for the moment anyway. Um, and again, <laughs> uh, Hugh says, Peter, why haven't you? Why haven't Rangers been mentioned on this show for the main representation in Europe and flying the flag for Scottish football? Well, 
uh, against you, I just want to mention to you that they have on many an occasion. Um, we are not a show that goes into this tit-for-tat nonsense um, that uh, goes on sometimes on Facebook, which you and many others are a party to. Uh, quite simply, Rangers are in European action against Bayer Leverkusen when it eventually does get played. Uh, they're 3-1 down, they're up against it. They know they're up against it. Um, but uh, quite simply, uh, I think Stephen Gerrard is more interested now in, yes, by all means, playing that game, um, but looking towards putting together a squad for the league. It's the be-all and end-all, Ruffy, and I'm not in any way trying to diminish uh, the Europa League, but I don't think he's got his eye on it now. No, no, it's the league for me, you know, and I'm sure all the Rangers supporters out there will see it that way as well. They, they know the rivalry between the two teams. They know what it means. They know the bragging rights. They know, you know, what it means to, well, Celtic supporters knew what it was to, to stop Rangers the last time and the Rangers supporters will know the same. Uh, they'll be overjoyed if they can do it. And uh, obviously, Stephen Gerrard will have won something, which will be a big thing as well. So, no, no, I, I agree with you. This year is going to be, it's just going to grow and grow. And, and let's hope that it's the football we're talking about and nothing else that uh, sort of clouds what, what that brings. Yeah, we'll know by August 6th when they play Bayer Leverkusen. I don't think they're going to get through. Um, that's just my personal opinion. You want opinions on the programme, we'll give you them. Do you think they'll get through, Tom? Um, no, I, I don't think they're completely without a chance, but I don't think there are no hopers going over there. The Rangers have been excellent away from home. Um, I think if Havertz signs for Chelsea, it'd be a huge boost for Rangers. So I, I don't think there's by any means a, a, a done done deal, but, uh, you know, we think by a lever's case, we maybe just have a little bit too much for them, but Rangers go there with a chance. Yeah, uh, that's what I call, uh, on on many a day on my Radio Clyde days, and Ruffy knows what my Radio Clyde days were about, we would laugh you out of town for that little mishy-moshy <laughs> 30 seconds that you no, just No, I don't think they'll get through. Yeah, yeah, thank the <laughs> Lord. Late. Brilliant. Yeah. You just moved it. You moved into <laughs> what I call safe Ruffyism. Just give us the mm -hmm. opinion and stop trying to keep favour with a few a few of your mates. Um, anyway, um, what about? Uh, by the way, I'm watching Hibs TV at the weekend, Ruffy. You know, because this is unbelievable. This, if that's the standard, oh, oh, he's a great yeah. player at Hibs. Oh, he, I know he missed 17 yeah. chances there, but he was unlucky. Um, yeah. Anyway, oh. Hearts, the Jambos, Lee McCulloch as assistant, um, Ruffy. Um, I know Big Lee's a great lad. Um, uh, you know he's done great, a great job up there at Dundee United. And I think if Robbie Nielsen can get it, that would be, that would be excellent. Yeah, yeah. Uh, by all accounts, uh, Robbie Nielsen thought very highly of him at Dundee United. They worked well as a team, uh, and Lee's been about. There's no doubt about that. And he has got a lot of knowledge, so you can see why he was really, really wanting to get him. One, one of his own guys. Somebody that uh, he can trust, and that's what it's all about now as an assistant. You know, it's somebody that when you're working with them, you can, you know, tune into them and, and get a wee bit of knowledge off them. And he's waited, you know, until he got the right person. Yeah, absolutely. I, don't, I, know, I know that there's been some suggestion of it, Tam, um, with Hearts fans getting ready for the game against Dundee. There's been some suggestion that they're contemplating boycotting away games. Obviously, they're not going to get in any games at the moment, but... I wouldn't like to see that happen. I think that's a negative impact on the game as a whole, despite what's going on and despite the fact I'm, I'm pro hearts and, and, and what's happened to them. Uh, I, I don't agree with that, Peter. You know, listen, we've been so long without seeing games. You know, hearts fans must be desperate <laughs> to get back. Same as all football clubs. You know, the supporters must be desperate to get back into their stadium and watch the team. So I don't, you know, cutting your nose off to spite your face. And listen, they have every right to be raging by the, the conduct of one or two clubs, but to um to, to boycott them, you know, go and, go and support your club. You know, go and support your club. Go to the game. Go and get behind the team. Go and get behind the players, the coaching staff. And, uh, you know, I, 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 nah, not for me. I think that's, that's very, very petty. Uh, to to deny clubs the, the maroon pound. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't know there was a maroon. Is the the maroon? Pound well, there is on there is on social media. Uh, oh, there is. Uh, oh. Is that right? Uh, well, to be fair, uh, I haven't I haven't actually spotted that yet. Tom, uh, I try and uh, switch myself off for for sanity at uh, things like that. But Ruffy, I didn't know there was a maroon pound oh. to, to deny no, everyone. Neither did I. Neither did I. You know, but I, I would agree. 
with Tam. You, uh, if you have any uh, grievance with any team that you're going to play, put your grievance on the park. You know, uh, yeah. and, beat them and and play th and beat them, and that that is one way of getting mm. through. But no, I think you've got to support your team. You ho you've got to get everybody there to give you the vocal support. So no, that's the way I would go down anyway. Yeah, absolutely. And that's exactly a sign of what's happening at Partick Thistle. Uh, yeah. There's that so attitude I'd coming be, through. Uh, yes. I know. <laughs> Uh, so we'll have great pleasure in beating them, 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 and them. <laughs> and, and by the way, wait till you see his predictions for the drop tomorrow, Sam. It's priceless. He's, oh. he's abs he, I think he's, I think he's surely, just surely picked can everybody. He, he can't can go for Hamonakis again, can he? <laughs> he's, picked up, he's picked everybody on the WhatsApp oh. group that was against him. Um, anyway, apart from anything else, listen, we're looking forward to the start of the Premiership. Uh, Rangers up at Pretoria against Aberdeen. Dundee United against St Johnston. Hibs Kelly is Tam. Um, obviously, we wish him uh, the very best of luck on Hibs TV. It's a great bunch uh, through there at Easter Road. He's still with us as well. Don't worry about that. Um, and um, St Mirren against Livingston. For me, I think St Mirren uh, will be a real Really interesting and very difficult side to beat this season just because I think Jim Goodwin looks as if he's putting a solid uh, back four together uh, and I'm intrigued he's made some good signings I, I think St Mirren um, will be um, not worrying about relegation there's my little tip on what I'm going to do with the 12 Celtic against Hamilton Aki he's looking forward to and Ross County against Motherwell so that's the games of the weekend it'll be you Tam I can't wait it's going to be great Oh, I'm buzzing for it. You know, it's the start of the season is brilliant. Even as a player, I loved it. You know, you, you know the, the excitement. Everybody wants to see how the teams are shaping up. You've done your pre-season, you know, and and you, you really want to see how the teams looking. And uh, for every club in Scotland and in, in the Premiership, they'll be excited to see how their teams look at the weekend. You know, and there'll be there'll be some some will be deliriously happy after the game, and some will be maybe shouting for the manager's head after one week. So. Yeah. Listen, that that is the that, that 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 is the nature of the game in Scotland, and uh, you know I, I, I'm just really excited. The players must be so excited to get out there and play. Obviously, there's no fans, but I was I was actually chatting about it yesterday. That might suit some <coughs> players, uh, no supporters with the, you know, particularly at, at maybe Hibs. You know, I've been I was at Hibs for a number of years, and the fans were brilliant and get behind you. But if you were getting beat, it was it can be a difficult place to go and play. Um, so I think tomorrow, and um, we've been interesting. Uh, sorry, Saturday, it'd be interesting to see how the how they cope with no supporters. You might see some players coming out of their shell uh, more than others. So that's the headline for the show right. today, Ruffy, which is basically the uh, meek, mild-mannered, weak Hibs players will benefit <laughs> from having no fans in the stadium. Yeah. That's the line. I don't know if you, yeah. I don't know if you have managed yeah. to take what I took from that line, but nevertheless, uh, that's it. Uh, uh, you uh, you uh, love the fans, think, Ruffy. It didn't bother you, did oh, it? Oh, well, that, 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 I think, Tam makes a wee bit of a, a good point there, but I would go further and I'm interested to see how the bigger teams with the big crowds, how they react, you know, because we know if there's 50,000 in the stadium, your fans, 50,000, they push you on and they, they get right behind you. It'll be interesting to see how the bigger clubs react to no fans uh, backing them. Uh, I'm sure the ability's still on the, the ability's still on the part, there's no doubt about that, but I think it'd be... As Tam was saying, there's some players don't like fans in there and can't handle yeah. it. There are there are good players who need fans. They need the fans mm. to you know lift them, and so it'll be interesting to see how the uh, the, the the bigger teams with the bigger crowds adapt to having no fans in the stadium. Yep, absolutely. Um, okay, uh, lots of people are, are, are offering their opinion on who they think will win the league. Um, we'll give you our 1 to 12 tomorrow on the programme. Tam will be with us with uh, Ruffy. Uh, we'll be giving you our 1 to 12, who we think as we get ready for the new season. Uh, certainly looking forward to that. Um, over and above that, lots of news coming uh, your way on PLZ Soccer on the football show, uh, which we will obviously... Um, keep you posted uh, there'll be a few smiles raised here and there and we're going to offer lots of prizes there's going to be um, lots more for you to get your teeth into some real surprises over the forthcoming weeks that I know will excite you uh, and hopefully you'll spread the word and get your fans and your mates to join us here on PLZ Soccer you like share and follow on our Facebook page and you can subscribe for absolutely nothing subscribe to our YouTube channel as well um, lots of interviews tomorrow 
tomorrow as managers and players preview uh, the start of the Scottish Premiership season. We're certainly looking forward to it as well. Uh, the only thing that will be the downside, Ruffy, is there'll be less time to see the players play because there's got to make five substitutions as well, which is another bugbear of mine. We've got to, got to stop the clocks and get more people playing more time. Peter. Stop cheating the fans, Tam. Fear, I would never I would never have played ninety minutes in my career if it was five subs. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have, so, have the problem playing about 10 games it's a very good point. It's one of the stories that came out today. The Premiership are obviously going to embrace it. Uh, the good news, though, Tom, I think we'll leave everybody tonight with the good news that potentially September uh, we might get you know a fair amount of fans in and then heading towards the new year, hopefully, we get back to some kind of what people would call normal. Yeah, listen, it was great news, positive news. You know, we're, we're desperate to get supporters back into the grounds, you know, to give the clubs money. And uh, listen, I think I think it'd be me mentally great for supporters as well because a lot of supporters are go, go to the games for years, season ticket holders for 10 years, 20 years, 40 years. They're used to going every Saturday or Sunday to watching their, watching their team playing and, and being stuck in the house. Um, listening <laughs> to, to, to the television is, is not great for, for your mental health either. So I think it'd be brilliant for everyone uh, connected to, to Scottish football to get to get supporters back in. I'm really looking forward to that day. Yeah, join us tomorrow if you can. Uh, as we preview the season, we give you our predictions. We'll read out most of your predictions. Uh, and I have to say thank you to the countless thousands upon thousands who are posting messages. Some, some of the banter is magnificent and funny. Um, and you always get the odd rocket. That's Scottish football for you. Um, we love the fact that you're on posting messages, caning as we can take the criticism. Uh, absolutely. It's all about opinions. You'll get them on this programme with all the pundits. Um, and we have a few surprises up our sleeve. That's all I'm going to tell you. Ruffy, we're getting ready for another season together, you and I. It's unbelievable. I think this will be our ninth season <laughs> together, Ruffy. Yeah, and uh, I'm going to try and win the predictions this year. Uh, came pretty close last year. <laughs> oh, uh, you were but, close. Uh, for the first time, I was close, but uh, I think I'll give it a better shot this year. And maybe I can oh, get this to win. We'll see. Well... I hope so, Ruffy, because the last thing I want for myself as a predictor is to win 10 in a row. That would be an absolute yeah. nightmare. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm, going, I'm, going, I'm going for nine this year. A, a double celebration, <laughs> Peter. Yes. <laughs> 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 I'm going for nine this year, Ruffy. You've got to win the predictor one year, to be perfectly yep. honest with you. And on that uh, yep. scurrilous note from McManus there, I do hope you've enjoyed the show. Join us if you can. Like, share and follow on Facebook. And share, uh, of course, on YouTube as well. And subscribe to us if you uh, can possibly do that. It doesn't cost you a penny. Thanks for watching. Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit Arnold.